happening everyone we're back today with another video today we are going to be fitting some easy camber shims to the ST on the back uh, been wanting to do this for a while just because even still after putting the stretch on or if you hit like a hefty bump don't know if you can see but there's like a, a wear line on the tire as you can see like the writing's faded it will catch ever so slightly and it's caused a bit of paint chip in there so i'll have to address that at some point too otherwise that's going to rust up nice and lovely as it already has started to um but yeah it's basically just uh i've wanted the car to tow in a little as well it just gives it a nice more aggressive look so what we need to do is we need to get these wheels off get the brakes off and then um remove the hubs as if we're doing axle spacers uh, because the shims actually sit behind the actual spacers as well so let's get to it. Oh, mate, do not buy lug nuts off eBay. Absolute trash. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this sort of system, it's just basically a 13 here and a 15 if you need to hold it, and then another 13 and a 15 to hold it, leave the caliper off, and then it's a case of just take the pads off, and then we can remove the carrier, which is I think another two 13 mil bolts as well. Okay, so now the two bolts are off, uh, just got to leave the caliper out of the way. This side was pretty seized, so it's going to give me a bit of a fight. Because off camera I'm going to um, try and free it off a bit, because it's, well, it doesn't work on the handbrake at all. Okay. Right, so the inner pad flew out. Mate, these things are trashed. You can see, actually, there's a crack here. So these are going to need changing at some point. Because, uh, obviously, where the caliper seized on, it was just gripping. Because, uh, you can see, the disc is quite rusty. And, obviously, if we get this out or one off, it's not well on evenly, either. It's quite hard to see. See that one side's higher than the other, and again, nice big crack in the middle. I don't really give a shit for now, if I'm honest. I pay for the whole pad, I'm going to use the whole pad because um, I want to upgrade to SC on 70 brakes. But something that I'm hiding at the minute is stopping me from doing that, so you'll find that out at some point. Okay, back to the uh, most important stuff today, anyway. You can see there is a bolt here, and there is a bolt here. We want to remove those, and that will take off the uh, caliper carrier. So if I point you up there so you can see me, well, not see me, but see the bolt, hopefully.
the Milwaukee battery ratchet is absolute trash. Couldn't undo a skin off a rice pudding. Okay, so the carrier is off, as you can see. And then what we can do now is hopefully try and get this disc off because it is uh by the looks of it absolutely stuck on. So I'll give it a couple gentle taps and hopefully that will come off. Uh, spigot ring was holding it on. Okay, fair enough. Ideally you would use a mallet but can't we go and to get one? I didn't need it too hard, trust me, that was a couple of taps. Okay, that's now off. Absolute junk. Oh god, you can see how hot it's got. Got all the fucking marks on it. Oh dear. It looks blue. Really, really blue. Yeah, it's trash. I'll leave that there for now. Again, we paid for the whole thing, we're going to use it. Okay, so, now that that's all the way, or out of the way even, um, your car will be a bit different. You'll have like 15 mils or 13 mils. I've got these Allen key things because I've got the spacers. So you just want to undo these four. If you've never done this before, I'd advise you probably take the shock out and maybe the spring as well, just to give you a bit more room because they are quite tight. Unless you get lucky like I did in Dom's car when I did these uh, ST170 brakes. But where these have been off before, I think I'm pretty confident that these should hopefully come off with not too much hassle, so he says. So let me just crack these all off and take them out. And then hopefully we can show you the next step. Alright, so them four bolts are out. And as you can probably tell by the state of these, uh, that wasn't very fun. Remember, don't mix aluminium with uh, steel because it oxidises naturally. So all I've got to do now is, because you can't get to the ABS sensor behind, like with the spacer on, I'm just going to quickly remove that. I think it's like a 10mm, which I never seem to be able to find. Actually, we'll try an 8. Looks like that could do the job. Mate, what is wrong with Ford's bolts? They're just absolute dog shit. Right, let me smash something onto this. Get some pliers and just wiggle that out. I'll spray a bit of WD on the other side. And we're free. Thank God for that. Okay, let's get rid of all this crap. Okay, so we've got a pack of shims. Comes with like a little in the instruction manual. R1 is for. Uh, one minute. Okay, so as you can see, we've got um, one here for Escort, Fiesta K, Mazda 2, uh, and you've got to cut out the areas that are shaded in. This part is only apparently for the ABS sensor on the Ford KA, so hopefully we'll get away with that. And then what I've done 
on the actual shim itself. I've just drawn it in with a sharpie where I need to cut on both of them and marked at the top because on the back of this paper you've got a big big list of uh, readings on what you can set the shims to. Um, these shims go up to one and a half degrees, negative camera one and a half degrees positive. Um, on the max cinema one and a half degrees negative. So what I've done is I've looked for the 1.5 degrees which is here and then because I'm not adding no toe because you can do this to correct your rear alignment if it's out it can't be adjusted. Um, because I'm adding zero degrees of toe the numbers there are 20, 20 and then all you need to do is you see like numbers on the top and the bottom you, this uh, shim twists as you can see so all you do is you match your two numbers so I've matched 20 and 20 up I'm sorry if you can't really see too well because the GoPro is absolute junk at um, focusing but yeah that's pretty much how you do it and then another little reminder on The rear right, which is um, obviously the side that we're doing now, the shim, like the numbers on the shim, must face the installer. And what that means is we're installing them from facing the front of the car, so the shim will face us. And on the left hand side, the shim will face the other way because otherwise, you will get uh, wrong camber readings and it will be all over the place, and you'll be scratching your head wondering what the hell's going on. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut these tabs out and then um, hopefully get it fitted on the car, make sure everything's alright, uh, like lines up all well and stuff, and we'll go from there. Hopefully I don't need to cut out them extra tabs for the ABS sensor, but if we do, it is what it is. So let me just cut these off camera, because as Roger would say, we're about to see some claret because I'm getting a standing knife out. Okay, so that's all cut. Let's have a little look. I think that'll work quite nicely. The sensor doesn't really get in the way. So now I've got to juggle about a million bloody pieces to get all this to work. So what I'm going to do is um, just let me put the camera to one side put it on time lapse or something and I'll just try and juggle this together because I've, I've got no rivets to hold on anything so yeah this is going to be a bit of a nightmare <laughs> Okay, so not as what I wanted to go to plan because I've now got to go out and get some bolts because these are too short at the bottom. To be fair, they're not long enough at the top either. I mean, that's fully tightened and they should be literally like right there. So what I'm going to do is get some bloody bolts and then um, I suppose we'll try this again. What a nightmare. Okay, so we've got the hub on, as you can see, some new bolts, that one, that thread's a bit knackered so I've, I've got a spare stub so if it goes funny I'll have to change it. Um, then not getting some M10 by 50s and I only had to cut about three threads off for them to work properly. Um, unfortunately they're not the same grade because these are like 12.9 and these are an 8.8 .8, but it's only temporary, I've got the 12.9s on order, I just want to make sure everything fits and works. Um, well, I'm pretty sure they're at 12.9 anyway. 
from what I saw on the bolt, I could be wrong. But I've, I've, I'll order exactly the same as these, just a bit longer, and it should be fine. So, um, I'm just going to put the brakes back on and stuff like that, on the time lapse. And I'll do the other side of camera and lower it down and see what it looks like. has the shim on as you can see I just wanted to quickly point out to you guys before it, well just in case you forget remember the numbers face the inside on this side so on the driver's side if we go uh, probably won't be able to see any wheels on okay here we go as you can see on the inside there are no numbers and then on the inside of this one, probably can't see too well, but there are numbers on the inside. But as you can tell, the other one had the numbers on the, uh, well, the other, the driver's side had no numbers on the ins, on this side, and then obviously passenger side has the numbers on this side just so the negative camber is equal and actually uh, does what you need it to do because otherwise it will be opposite and it will be all be messed up I just wanted to point that out to you guys just in case you guys forgot okay so we boshed that side out I quite like working the passenger side because it's never as rusty as the drivers okay so um Let's get this stand out of the way. I can already see these towing in, oh my god. <laughs> these are fucking big time. you guys can see it but oh my god it is so much better because toe on it is absolutely crazy fucking sort of so hard to see it's not like crazy noticeable that's a bit of a better shot isn't it that's a real real nice fitment now that is like bang on like before it was good, but this is like fucking, I could slam that on its tits and it wouldn't rub whatsoever. It's nowhere near gonna rub now because I don't know if you can see up, well, no you can't, but it's like taking all the paint off the fucking arch where it was before. All right, so I moved the car back a bit and Hopefully you'll be able to see that a bit better now. It's not masses, like Luke said to me on the phone last night, do it to like all the way, because you won't notice the difference if you just did it to like sort of, because I want to just do like one degree, so I don't want to go mental. But he just said don't do the full one and a half, because you don't really notice it anyway. So a big thank you to him. But it looks so much better, because before it had way too much poke, and now we just lose that bit of poke on the top now. So by the time we hit a big bump, hopefully it should, miss a lot of this out because as you can see it's catching like here so hopefully it will take a lot of that out now. hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video of me fitting some camera shims to the ST hopefully it will help with a bit of cornering because it's not too crazy but definitely has helped with the looks of the car now it looks so so much better 
don't worry for all of you lot who are worried about me putting them sort of weaker bolts on I've ordered a set and they're coming in the post so once they're here I'll be sure to change them straight away and that'll be it for today I'll be doing a giveaway next week it's just that I'm on night shift for two weeks at a minute so I can't really do a live stream in the evenings because I'll be having to go to work don't worry thank you so much for 1500 subscribers it means the world and we'll get this giveaway drawn next week thank you guys take it easy